speaker and also Senator uh, Chair for the, for the meeting um, for this and I think probably henceforth. So uh, Duncan will describe the, the details of that and then we'll see if uh, Conte, uh, Chair from the Greek to then come and share the meeting with the rest of the Cape members. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Duncan Dooley Robinson, I'm a senior solicitor um, employed by the Pride Authority. Um, I think the first matter Constitution says that the subcommittee, the minimum quorum membership for the subcommittee is, or the for the subcommittee is two members, um, including having a chair to proceed with for that purpose. So the, state, the, the issue will be that you need to nominate a chair amongst you, um, and then obviously vote on, on the nomination. So I would invite you if you wanted to uh, to nominate the previous chair, and then once that nomination is complete.
sets out the work we're going to do around our responsibilities in terms of giving an opinion on your financial statements and forming a, a view on uh, value for money arrangements within the authority. In pages 14 and 15 we set out sort of a general background and context as to how we and how we will consider the work around, particularly around value for money, so that gives the background around the financial challenges that you face and, and your responses to those both in terms of uh, the challenges within the plans within the authority itself around the fire station merger strategy uh, and other activity you're doing around service transformation and then comments more broadly on the evolution that's taking place in Liverpool City region and also blue light -like collaboration sort of more nationally and what that might mean. So at the moment some of those things are obviously in a, in a state of flux so we will we, we consider them as the year, the year progresses uh, and come back and report to you in about sort of, um, August, uh, July, August time. Uh, there are some specifics around the accounts themselves, so there's an early process for closing down the accounts, which is tightening the sort of deadlines, uh, a number of specifics around uh, fair value accounting, changes to corporate government statements, uh, and fair prices, pension, and the whole of government accounts, which we're required to report upon. So that, that's the sort of broad context for the sort of audit. In terms of specifics, there's a level of materiality which we work to in terms of reporting back to yourselves, and that's outlined on page 17. And there are various things within the accounts which are more sensitive in nature, so things around cash, uh, disclosure of officers, remuneration, and, and the, the audit fees themselves, where to a sort of lower level of sensitivity in terms of reporting back here. Pages 18 and 19 and 20 have got what we call significant risks, and they're not specifically significant risks to the authority, they're, they're risks in relation to sort of the audit, so there, there are areas of where uh, there may be estimation of sig in terms of significant so we would spend more time and on the right hand side of those boxes it, it sort of sets up the work we've completed to date and what we will do in the time between now and the end of July when we intend to complete the audit and report back to yourselves. Uh, there's some other risks in there which again are in uh, some of the big areas of expense so around operating expenses and uh, employee remuneration, obviously what are your costs are around salaries uh, and also around the firefighters so the big numbers in the accounts where you would expect us to spend our time. And value for money, the slight change to the approach this year, which is governed by the National Audit Office, which was previously governed by uh, the Audit Commission. Uh, and it, it's a slightly different uh, nuance 
that it sets out on page 25 the criteria that we're, uh, we're, we will be following in relation to making our judgments <coughs> around that area. Then moving to the report on page 27, uh, just to cover <coughs> what we see as sort of significant risks, notwithstanding the sort of context that I uh, suggested before. So, as you can imagine, around value for money, we're looking at uh, the savings plans you've got in place and the overall financial strategy is the key elements of. Uh, the answer to some of those challenges. Indeed, there is an answer. Um, we've done some work already, uh, and that's set out on pages 29 and 30, and there's no, no issues to report back to at this stage. And then on 31 is just the sort of key, key dates within the audit cycle. As I say, aiming to be complete and finished by the end of July, so uh, the work itself in earnest on the final, final accounts are starting next week. And, Take time scale before we report back. So happy to take any questions, share or any, any comments on the report. Item five is the uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, and if I help the uh, members of the committee, item five through to item eight, these are standard reports the uh, subcommittee receives every year. So, so the first one, item five, is the 2015-16 annual year end internal audit report. Uh, members of the committee received an update on the progress of the 15-16 audit plan at the last meeting. This report, and in particular Appendix A, provides a summary of the completed audits for 2015-16. The table at the bottom of page 52 summarises the audit reviews that have been carried out in the year, and Appendix A provides more information on those audits and a brief description of the audit review. After taking account of the two reviews that have now been rephased into 2016-17, internal audits, actual performance, on the basis of the reviews completed, paragraph 7 on page 52 provides a summary of internal audits overview of the authority's internal control processes. Internal audit's opinion is that they can provide a, substantive, a substantial assurance that the processes accord with proper practice, have been complied with during the year, and only some minor weaknesses have been identified for which officers have now acted as a department to resolve these weaknesses. Members are asked to note the report, but I'm happy to take any questions. <coughs> Chair, just, just for the clarification, it's not a question, just um, <coughs> to, to, to myself and Councillor uh, Roberts have to declare an interest because of the internal order. It's employed by the Blue City Council. Item 6 is the annual government statement 2015-16. The 
The annual governance statement, it's an annual statement that the authority must produce <coughs> that outlines the internal control processes that exist in the year and the statement reviews the effectiveness of these controls. The statement is attached to the report as Appendix A. I can refer members on pages 70 through to 77. That outlines in the annual governance statement the internal control uh, systems, policies, procedures and operations that were in place throughout 2000. Controls and processes in the annual governance statement are consistent with those in previous statements and no new issues or processes have been identified. Members' attention is drawn to the significant governance issues identified in, uh, in section on page 77 through 78 that, as with previous years, it highlights the delivery of the future approved budget savings options to meet the financial challenge facing the authority as an issue that must be closely monitored to ensure the financial plan is delivered. In addition, the statement outlines the potential future governance considerations facing the authority in light of the Police and Crime Bill and the Cities and Local Government Devolution Act. If members are content with the annual governance statement attached to Appendix A, then the Chair of the Audit Subcommittee will be asked to sign off the annual governance statement. In addition, as part of Grant Thornton's risk assessment procedures, they developed a questionnaire in relation to the risk from fraud, law, laws and regulations, and the long-term sustainability of the company. These risks tie in closely with the internal controls that are being considered with the annual governance statement, and therefore this questionnaire has been attached to the report as Appendix B for members' consideration. SMG have already considered the issues raised by Grant Thornton and SMG's responses to the questionnaire are outlined in Appendix B. Members are asked to consider the information contained in Appendix B and determine if these responses are consistent with the Audit Subcommittee's understanding or whether they wish to add any further comments. I'm happy to take any questions. Agenda item 7 is the 2016-17 internal audit plan. Members approved the three year 2015-16 through to 2017-18 internal audit plan at the meeting on the 26th of May 2015. This report updates that plan for any amendments following the completion of audit reviews in 2015-16 and any other officer amendments. As per Appendix A, the plan proposes using 14 days to review fundamental systems, 68 days to carry out strategic or project reviews, and the balance will be held back for management of contingency items. Members are asked if they wish to comment on or add anything to the proposed 2016-17 internal audit plan. I'm happy to take any questions. To be honest, it depends on what internal audit find. I, I suspect for 2015-16, we have the final phase of the new financial systems being implemented. So internal audit, as you would expect, because it was a new system, spent a little bit more time on the, the creditors, the budget system, the journal. So obviously going to 2016-17, we've now assessed the new system. So I would imagine that wouldn't be the case. But that's why we hold back some contingencies just in case we do want to look at Item 8 is the Treasury Management Annual Report 2015-16. The Treasury Management Strategy was approved at the Budget Authority meeting on the 26th of February 2015 and covers the items outlined in paragraph 5 on page 100. Members received an interim report on Treasury Management Performance at the last meeting and this report now outlines the actual Treasury Management Performance for 2015. 
As stated in paragraph 8 of page 100, 100, Treasury management activity has been carried out in line with the approved strategy, and the detailed activity for the year is outlined in Appendix A. In particular, as per paragraph 6 on page 106, no new long-term borrowing was taken out of the year, as interest rates for short-term borrowing was lower than long-term borrowing, and investment rates remained low. Also, all investments were consistent with the investment strategy, and individual investments met the investment criteria of the credit ratings and limits. The table at the top of page 103 outlines the investments that were held at the end of 2015-16 by type and credit rating. Members are asked to note the report. Uh, 
risk six relates to technological risks. So there have been a number of changes made as a result of that to details in 6.3 and 6.6, um, where we are changing some of the language that is being utilised to be data being compromised. And then just you know, to draw your attention, we have had a couple of issues more recently where um, there's been attempted breaches of our, uh, our security arrangements, but they've been dealt with uh, adequately by our ICT departments and through the structures in place to prevent um, those compromises uh, having any impact on the service. And that's been dealt with you know, by the ICT, but also by the senior information risk owners um, who have presented staff with guidance around you know, being cautious about particular emails which may carry ransomware and so on and so forth and viruses. So again, to just re-emphasise the, the, the security aspects of our, our ICT uh, arrangements. Um, and finally, 6.6, .6, uh, Director of ICT and Director of Strategy and Performance, uh, now believe that the replacement of the government's uh, protective marketing scheme with the government's security classifications has removed this risk and, no, and has no guidance has been given by government on the business level impact associated with the BSC. So again, just draw members' attention to those particular areas of corporate research that have changed or you know, been updated since the previous uh, presentation. With the agreement of the Chair and members of the Board Subcommittee, can I ask that Agenda Item 11 be considered before Item 10, as it seeks approval for the nomination of the Officer to act as the Pension Scheme Manager? Is that okay? So, if we, if we look now at Agenda Item 11, the Fire Pension Scheme Administration, uh, this report outlines paragraph 4 to 6, the current Pension Scheme Administration arrangement for both the fire pension scheme and the local government pension scheme. The fire pension scheme administration is currently with Lancashire County Council, your pension service. As per paragraph seven and eight, the government strives to get local government pension scheme administrating bodies to collaborate or see Lancashire County Council and London Pension Fund Authority share pension administration through a partnership by the creation of a local authority company Lancashire and London Pensions Partnership, and this will be based in Lancashire. This company will deliver the services currently provided by your pension service. So the authority now faces a number of options regarding the contract with Lancashire County Council's your pension service. As outlined in paragraph eight and nine, the most efficient route uh, that will effectively see no change to the service received by the authority or firefighters in terms of function or price is to enter into a discharge of function arrangement with Lancashire County Council for the administration of the five pension schemes. Officers are recommending that this option, this option be approved by members of the audit subcommittee. And also, to assist with the administration of the current pension scheme, the authority had delegated <coughs> the scheme manager role to the deputy chief executive post, uh, as outlined in paragraph 10. As this principal officer post has now been deleted, this report also seeks that members approve that the Deputy Chief Fire Officer becomes a nominated scheme manager. So therefore, members are asked to approve that the Deputy Chief Fire Officer be nominated as the officer to act as the pension scheme manager, and the administration of the fire pension scheme function is discharged to Lancashire County Council. I'm happy to take any questions. Now go back to item 10, which is the firefighter pension scheme internal dispute resolution process. As per paragraph seven, uh, 3 to 7, all occupational pension schemes are required to have an arrangement for an internal dispute resolution procedure. The authority has in place such procedures for the firefighter pension scheme and the local government pension scheme. Most pension benefits resolved without the need to go to the internal dispute resolution process. 
if a dispute goes to the internal dispute resolution process, the pension scheme member can still appeal to the pension ombudsman if he's made unhappy uh, with the outcome. The current five pension scheme internal dispute resolution process is a single stage process with the chief fire officer, officer delegating all appeals to be heard by the pension scheme manager, which is now the deputy chief fire officer. Following a, a review and consultation with the FPU, this report is recommending that for the fire pension scheme process, the authority agrees to implement a two-stage process as outlined in paragraph eight and appendix C. The director of people and organizational development would hear all stage one appeals and the scheme manager, the deputy chief fire officer, would hear any appeal that went on to stage two. The revised process was more consistent with the processes offered in other fire and rescue authorities and put forward in the 2009 Firefighter Pension Scheme Circular. However, members, if they so wish, can continue the current single stage process as outlined in Appendix B. Members are asked to approve the revised two stage internal dispute resolution process for the Fire Pension Scheme. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. And um, just to note, 